Microbiology. What is it, and what does microbiology have to do with you? This field of study is a key part of our world, from human and animal medicine to understanding the environment. On this show, Minerva Garcia, a practicing microbiologist, swings open the door to her lab to welcome you into this intriguing world. Now, let's meet Minerva, the microbiologist. Welcome all to my show. Meet Minerva, the microbiologist. My name is Minerva A. Garcia. I'm curling the Social Director of Microbiology at Jacoby Medical Center, New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation. I am your microbiologist. Now again, microbiology with the microbes welcomes you in, and so does poetry with creative lines. In today's show, I'll be talking about the following topics. RSV Abstract by Minerva, presented, accepted at the ASM, American Society for Microbiology, at the Clinical Virology Symposium in 2016. Technologist Eve Queen interviews Minerva. Facts about the Delta variant. Poems tomorrow. So let's get started. RSV Abstract by Minerva. Where I stress in my abstract that respiratory syncytial virus, known as RSV, which is a pediatric virus, usually in the winter months, will jump to adult population. The host that will be opportunistic, such as immunocompromised, immunosuppressed, diabetic lupus, elderly population, and patients at risk with debilitating health issues. And this will jump from pediatric population to the adult population. Today, we are seeing that the coronavirus, known today that we know as COVID-19, had jumped from animal to humans. And this is no term as zoonotic. So when we saw RSV pediatric, virus jumping to adult, we know that also other viruses could occur, like for the telepatosis, which is a pediatric virus. This could also jump to adult populations and the weakened populations with immunosuppressed, immunocompromised system. Today, we're witnessing RSV cases that usually not seen during the warm months. We know that RSV is a virus that strikes in the cold. It's a seasonal virus. Hi, so now, Eve will interview me. Hi, Minerva. How are you today? Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me on your show. Sure. All right. Welcome to the show. So you've been talking about your abstract on RSV. Right. So what year did you write this? 2014? Um, no, actually, it was actually in, I did write into it to 2014, mm-hmm. but it was accepted in various um, uh, articles and uh, for symposium for presentation, and actually it was accepted at the ASM uh, Virology Symposium. Um, so that was pretty happy uh, with this um, triumph. Wow, ASM, what an accomplishment. <laughs> Thank you. So... Why did you decide to research the respiratory single virus at this time? Well, for me, uh, I always loved research, and I started in college doing research, and I'm also very interested and um, very intuitive when it comes to research. I think learning starts with research, and that's how we can move science forward and help patients in the world. Um, imagine if we would have our research today. Um, we would have... Um, the COVID-19 vaccine, which is helping so many people all over the world. Um, so right now I can say that uh, because, um, you know, I have such a strong, strong um, you know, interest in research, giving that, um, giving away my HIPAA, uh, um, by, you know, that I do have as a, as a patient, I know that I'm a diabetic patient. I became very concerned with the respiratory symptoms that I experienced in uh, one of the cases that I had in the winter uh, seasons. Um, and I did a respiratory panel 
for other viruses, and especially the flu is all negative. So I became concerned and theorized that most likely um, my hypothesis was that it could be an RSV. Um, RSV is, also, is only seen uh, in pediatric population. So I really hypothesized that um, being an adult and being immunocompromised practically with being diabetic, that um, most likely I did have RSV. I didn't test at that time, but it just happened that I got a case of an ugly population, ugly, uh, population which was a, a male. And to my surprise, he was positive for RSV. And I proved my hypothesis was conclusive with my theory. So th this was really an excellent way for me to prove that. So I hypothesized that this virus in a pediatric population um, will jump to other population, meaning adult. Also, patients with immunocompromised supp and suppressed immune system will become opportunists. Okay. So are we seeing more RSV cases during the summer now? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I am saying that because um, actually, um, since RSV is usually um, you know, presented in the winter season because it likes the cold, we are seeing that this summer, since we didn't have RSV in the winter, we have now this population of pediatric cases now seen in the summer, which is unusual. So this virus that is usually in the winter is now behaving in the summer as a winter virus. So it's almost like understanding that you have a virus that has jumped from animal to human. So we are seeing a virus that's usually seasonal in the winter that now is jumping to the summer. And to me, this is very interesting. Now, I did hypothesize that that, could have, that will happen, but I didn't want to put that in my paper because most people would say that can never happen. And we see in the reality of this has happened and the strength of a virus, how it's able to mutate, adapt in order to survive and strive. So we're kind of comparing this RSV virus adapting to certain opportunistic situations to how the COVID-19 virus is reacting now with the two variants as well. Yes, you can say that because um, the whole goal and the whole purpose of a virus is to adapt, mutate, and make more of itself, the replication, RNA. And um, a virus is very, very lethal and very potent because it's able to reproduce. Think about cloning, you know? Um, so if you can understand the concept of cloning, so you could, you could really think the virus, how it replicates. And it replicates very, very rapidly. So knowing what you know now about RSV after doing your abstract, when you first heard about this new virus emerging from Wuhan, China in 2020, what were your first thoughts? Well, the first thing that I thought to my mind is, well, guess what? It's going to come to the United States and it's going to go globally. Because of transportation, we all travel, we take plane and etc. So it will be a matter of time that I know it's going to hit the U.S. So my goal was to prepare my laboratory staff ahead of time. But I was ahead of my, my goal because I already had implemented policy and procedures that my staff were equipped to handle any crisis, especially COVID-19. And I knew that COVID-19 was airborne be way ahead of the game when anyone was stressing that COVID was airborne. So I had prepared family, friends, co-workers, and everyone with a protocol with policy procedures as this virus being airborne. So when we were handling our influenza testing and flu on the biological hood three, I immediately switched to biological level where we do testing for our TB patients. So this helped improve and the safety of my staff and none of my staff were at risk. Very good. So did you have to buy any new instrumentation for the lab for this, for this test or? Well, for the COVID-19 uh, known as SARS, uh, our laboratory and well, like most laboratory did not have the equipment nor the test to perform um, SARS-CoV-2 
known as uh, COVID-19. So we had to bring instrumentation and I had to do validations. And also tests had to be implemented or developed. So we were very fortunate that many, um, I would say a couple of uh, manufacturers, for example, uh, BioRad, Roach, Cepheid, uh, um, were critical in instrumentation that was able to identify uh, SARS-CoV-2. So this was very important in the diagnostic process and procedures and how we test patients. And the laboratory profession were critical in the testing and the reporting of COVID-19 to clinicians in order to treat the patients. So during this time when you're implementing these new procedures, it's a very stressful time. How were you feeling? Were you scared? Well, one of my uh, logo is, when you're prepared, you're not scared. So this has always been my preparation and the way my outcome when I approach any pathogens. And one thing we know is that SARS-CoV-2 is a lethal pathogen. So to me, the way I handle it and the way I look back, I think we handle it really well. I use all the proper procedures and protocols in place that I have learned as a certified clinical laboratory professionals. We use PEP, we use gloves, we use lab coats, we use goggles, and we have to use masks and also um, uh, safety shields. And we all have to work on the bilateral safety cabinet level three. And this was really very important to show the safety of my staff and to show that all the result in testing goes out as soon as possible, less than one hour and a half, which is really incredible. And the testing always done the nucleic acid amplification, which is known as a PCR. Um, so this was very important in handling this crisis. So, once you were given the opportunity to take the COVID-19 vaccine, did you? Yes, I did. Actually, I was the first of my staff to get a COVID-19 during that week. And I actually was really happy because I, after that, I was able to meet our CEO, Chris Mastromano, and he really came and applauded all those employees who came in and took the chance without being afraid and to be exemplary for the staff. And today I'm a VAX champ for the New York City Health Hospital Corporation at Jacoby Medical Center. I encourage all my staff, which they follow my example, they all got vaccinated. Also family and friends and everybody, they realize that how important this is. And I was an example and look at me, I'm fine. And today I'm vaccinated. I encourage everybody to get the word out and please get the vaccine because it will save your life your family, your friends, and also will protect you and other one from everybody that if you get vaccinated, you will not have this lethal virus in you. You will pull through and if you get, you will not be hospitalized. You'll make it because the, this vaccine that we have today is really effective against the variant. Um, regardless that you're vaccinated, there's always chance that you will come down with a variant strain, but chances are it would not be as lethal as if you are not um, um, unvaccinated. So everyone who's vaccinated, you have to know that it's so important for you to continue with the idea and tell everybody that the only way to go is to be vaccinated to protect everyone, especially the elderly, the immunosuppressed, the immunocompromised. Any patient who has been o organ, who's accepted organs, um, especially any children under 12 who has been vaccinated, they're all at risk. So they're calling this new variant the Delta variant. Where did this variant originate? Well, th this um, Delta originated from, from India. And um, one of the problems that we see in India is that um, you know, they're, they're lacking so much of medicine. They, they, um, they don't even have 
so many supplies that is needed. And the population.